And now I'm headed to Chappaqua, New York to visit Yuki Sagusa. Hi, Yuki. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Nice to see you. Oh, nice to see you. What a beautiful fall day this is, uh, huh? Yeah, it's Colors just gorgeous. Colors just popping out yeah. all over. Yeah. We actually moved in during the summer, and that's one of the reasons why I called you. We discovered a little bit of a problem. We park our car in the garage, and uh, we want to keep all the mud and the dirt in the garage before we enter the house. Sure. sure. Once we're inside, it becomes pretty clear that what Yuki needs is a closet. Yeah. Yeah. So you got uh, you got three walls already here. We just put a, a short wall in here in the front and some doors, mm -hmm. and you'll have your closet. Because we don't want to build our new wall on top of the carpet, Yuki and I measure the area needed for the closet and then transfer that measurement to the floor. Once the depth of the closet has been measured on both sides, I'll lay a piece of masking tape between the lines, stretch a chalk line over it, snap it, and then use the utility knife to cut through the carpet. Yuki pulls up the carpet and then moves on to remove the molding. Well, the baseboards are off and we're ready to build our walls. That was pretty easy. We'll begin by putting down this bottom plate. This is going on to concrete down here. So what we'll have to do first of all is drill some holes into that concrete and that means using a masonry bit. I drill a clearance hole through the wood block or bottom plate which also starts the hole in the concrete. To prevent drilling too deeply, we'll wrap a piece of black tape around the drill bit. When the bottom edge of this tape reaches the concrete, we'll know it's time to stop drilling. I slip a lag screw through the 2x4 and into the lag shield, then snug it tight with a socket wrench. We'll do the same thing on the ceiling, screwing the top plate to the header. Next, we'll measure the distance between the top and bottom plates, and then head out to the garage to cut our first wall stud. All right, good. You bet. That'll be a good one. We'll slide our wall stud up against the existing wall between the top and bottom plates. Then, use a drill to countersink a pilot hole and attach our wall studs with a couple of drywall screws. They're going to go right into those pre-drilled holes that we did earlier. Next, Yuki does the same thing to the other stud. For rigidity, we'll add a small piece of 2x4 to the center of the new wall. Now, with the framing in place, it's time to measure for the wall board. Wide. 14 wide. Okay, let's go out to the garage and cut this uh, out. Okay. Now there's really no big trick to cutting wallboard. We simply mark our dimensions on one side with a pencil. And using a straight edge and a very sharp utility knife, we'll score along that line. Turn the board over. Okay, straight down. Right. Fold it back along the score we just made. Okay, good. Use that utility knife again, cut down the fold, put it back down, and it snaps right off. There we go. Okay, let's just carry this in. Okay. Let's drop it in. We secure the wall board with drywall screws, making sure the heads are below the surface, but not tearing the paper. Yuki's out in the garage cutting the door jams that we're going to trim out this opening with. And I checked to be sure that everything on the sides here was plumber vertical, and it is, but the top up here is not level. It's low on this end, and we'll have to take that into consideration when we put this jam up. Well, here she is. How'd it turn out? Good, I think. Okay. Let's go ahead and fit this in. Okay, good. Oh, it's great fit for length. All right. We'll insert some shims along the door jam to level it. Using two shims, one inserted from each side of the door jam, we're able to adjust the slope of the jam until it's level. Once level, we'll nail the jam through the shims, score the shims with a utility knife, and snap them off. Next, we measure the door thickness and transfer that measurement to the jam using a combination square. This is how we create the door stop piece of molding that keeps the doors from swinging into the closet. We'll want to seal the joints between our old wall and our new wall. So I use some self-stick perforated joint tape and press it into the corners. Next I'll load up my putty knife with some joint compound. It's a spackle-like material that when dry can be sanded smooth. 
Pressure on the side of the putty knife blade pushes the compound into the holes, creating a seamless surface. To conceal the gap or space between the edge of the wall board and the door jamb, Yuki cuts a special piece of molding called door casing. Once the casing is cut to length, I'll back it off about an eighth of an inch to the edge of the jamb. Then Yuki nails it in place. Well, these are your new doors. Mm -hmm. They're louver doors. They match the other doors here in the room. And I want to hang these using a non-mortise hinge. It's just easier to install. So we lay this on here. I've measured down about seven inches for the top mm -hmm. here. I'm going to take a self-centering drill bit. See, it's got a sort of a shaft here and a bit on the inside. After drilling the pilot holes, we'll drive in screws to secure the hinge in place. Okay. And this one? Uh-huh. Once the hinges are on the doors, okay. it's just a matter of putting the doors into position and screwing the hinges into the jam. Well, in just one day, we transformed this empty space into a really terrific closet. So what do you think? Wow, that's great. It's perfect. It's just what we wanted. A couple things uh, you'll need to do to finish it up. Mm -hmm. uh, when the joint uh, compound dries tomorrow, give it a light sanding, then prime and paint everything, and then pick out some really nice knobs or pulls here. Did you enjoy this? Yes, I did. It was great fun. Thank you, you so much for your help. You're very welcome. You know, you used about every power tool in my mobile shop. So anytime you want to borrow my tool belt, Ooh, okay. it's yours. Thank you very much. You're welcome.